Good evening, this is Los and this is the Retro Report. And tonight on the Retro Report, former engineers of the tech giant OCP are suing their former employer, claiming they were scapegoated by the tech giant for the massive failures that led to the recall of Ed 209. And now, a word from our sponsor. Do you like video games? Do you like to buy video games? Well then I have got some news for you. Welcome to Retro Wolf's Video Game Sale Blowout. I've got amazing deals for you today. I'm selling off my entire collection. I have Dreamcast games. I have Nintendo 64, Sega, Wii, Xbox, Xbox 360, Nintendo DS, PlayStation Vita, everything you can imagine. I even have Sega Master System. NES, SNES, I've got that too. I even have a bunch of random shit right here. Need some GameCube? I got you covered. And last, and certainly least, PlayStation 2. Uh, nobody wants to buy that garbage anyways. And you can buy this entire collection for 12 low monthly payments of $200,000. So call 420-666-6969, that's 420-666-6969, so that you can buy this collection today. Order today and you will get a free Corgi with your purchase. Again, that's 420-666-6969. I'll buy that for a dollar. And now, we look at Robocop. Who is he? What is he? And more importantly, are his video games any good? The 80s and 90s were great times to be a kid. Join me as I dive into the world of movies, music, video games and toys, and explore what made these decades so great. This is The Big Retro Show. What's up you guys, this is Los and this is The Big Retro Show and today on The Big Retro Show I'm talking about Robocop video games. Now the Robocop movie was one of my favorite movies. I used to watch this one almost every single weekend. But when the sequels were released it seems like the quality of the movies went down. So it got me thinking, did the video games kind of get the same curse as the movies did? Did they start off really good and end up in the gutter? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about today guys. But before I do, I'm going to give a shout out to my boy RetroWolf88 who helped me out with the intro to this video. RetroWolf88 has a great channel. He's one of the best content creators out there on YouTube. He talks a lot about Switch games and a lot about retro games and his secret weapon, Mama Retro. Mama Retro is his mom. He plays video games with her and she's hilarious. She's great. So make sure that you guys go and check out his channel. Subscribe to it, check out his videos, like, comment, and you know, you know the rest, guys. So, let's take a look at the Robocop video games, guys, and see what we come up with. Robocop's first appearance in video games came with 1988's classic arcade running gun of the same name. Robocop the arcade game had great graphics for the time, and faithfully followed the movie it was based on. The game was developed and published by Data East and was one of my favorites in the arcades. I like that you started using your fists and then upgraded to the iconic Robocop gun when you needed it, which was early on in the first stage. The game was challenging but highly beatable if you had a $5 bill to dump into the machine. The success of the game paved the way for the various ports that ensued. Meeting Ed 209 at the end of the first stage made me really feel like I was in a Robocop game, and I love that. Robocop was ported to the Apple IIe, Amiga, Atari ST, and Commodore 64. It was also ported to the mighty Nintendo Entertainment System, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. Robocop on the NES was released in 1989 in time for the holiday Christmas season. While Robocop on the NES was based on the arcade run and gun like most of the versions were, it was not the same game. For starters, the graphic took a notable dip in quality, as many arcade ports did on the NES, which isn't a bad thing in my opinion, because it defines the character of the NES graphics. You start out in old Detroit cleaning up the scum that has enveloped the city, much like the arcade game, but therein ends its similarities. 
For starters, Robocop can no longer jump and is forced to only move left and right. Secondly, the music is boring and repetitive. If you like the Robocop theme song, get ready to enjoy what you love for the entire game. The only time the music switches is when you face a boss. They could have licensed a few more songs to add to the variety of the game and not make it so boring. The game's difficulty is up there, but you can beat it if you're really determined. I found myself dying and dying and using some of the cheats to get to the latter portions of the game. I'll buy cheats for a dollar. The game lets you switch between your trusty gun and your fists and features a life bar much like the arcade game. Overall the game is not horrible, but it's not one of the best on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Robocop received a port on the OG Game Boy which is surprisingly a lot of fun. The monochrome colors that are displayed by the game don't bother me at all, and the ability to match up the face in Robocop's memory to the mugshot in the police database is actually fun. Check out some footage from the game. Have you ever played it? Robocop returned to the arcades to coincide with the release of the second movie. This time, however, Robocop 2, released to the arcades in 1991, switched from a running gun to a hybrid of a beat em up, third person shooter, and racing game. Now, don't get me wrong, I love beat em ups, but this one was a bit weird. For starters, Robo's gun should be able to kill the perps in just one hit, but it acts a lot as if it were a punch attack. You do actually get to punch and slam people if you get close to them, which is insanely satisfying. The characters are bland and boring, but surprisingly are a lot of fun to beat up. The third person shooter parts seem to break up the action and I didn't care for them. The driving stages are complete crap as the enemies are all the same and for some reason multiple helicopters litter the sky, which you shoot down of course. Even more weird is the fact that no one shoots at you from either the vans or the helicopters. They just sort of drive and fly overhead as you pick them off. The controls of this game take a bit getting used to as well. One button shoots left, the other button shoots right, and another button makes Robocop jump. It feels super wonky at first, but you get used to it. The other weird thing about this game is that you can enlist a friend to do some co-op gaming with you, where you both control Robocops. But I'm not going to show you that because I have no friends. Despite the weirdness, I did have fun playing Robocop 2. I actually didn't know it existed in the arcades and that was a pleasant surprise to discover it. Ah, the friendship benefits of YouTubing. Finding new games. The NES got a port of Robocop 2 as did a lot of other systems, but I'm only going to talk about the NES because quite frankly, the other games are not worth talking about. The NES version of Robocop 2 had a bevy of issues to say the least. First off, the game is unplayable due to the platforming difficulty and the fact that you slide after every jump. I have no clue what they were thinking when they programmed that gem into the game. The other thing about this game is that if you don't collect a certain number of nuke, which in the movie is the drug that Robo is trying to eradicate, and arrest a certain number of goons, you have to start the stage all over again. Super frustrating. To get nearly enough nuke for the game to let you progress, you have to find hidden nuke stashes throughout the game. That means you gotta jump somewhere, slide, try not to die, try to find the nuke, and hope that you have enough to pass the level. That of course didn't stop people from buying it though and encouraging Ocean to release a version of it on the Game Boy. Just take a look at this hot mess of a game. Robo's bullets look like little canyon balls and the jump collision in this game is broken. Sadly, the suckery that befell the video gaming world with Robocop 2 home ports did not end with the release of Robocop 3 on multiple platforms. While slightly better than Robocop 2, Robocop 3 still provided plenty of suckery for you to enjoy. Or not. First, I'll take a look at the NES version. The graphics aren't that bad and the music is okay. 
I guess. For starters, you have to be a bit far away from your enemies in order for your bullets to register a hit. If you are at point blank range and fire at them, the bullets do not register. During this iteration of the game you have multiple weapons you can use, including a three-way shot, a homing missile, and a more rapid fire gun. The thing about this though is that you have to collect ammo for each weapon, which is a pain. You are also armed with a jetpack, but there is no reason that you need it. Other than it appeared in the movie, and there's nothing wrong with sticking to the movie, even if the movie sucks like Robocop 3 did. The game is insanely difficult. I didn't get far in it using my natural video game ability, and had to rely on cheats to get into the later stages of the game, so I could just show you some different scenery. Check out the Sega Master System version of Robocop 3. It's totally different than the NES version, and that's a good thing. I think I prefer the graphical style of the Master System over the Nintendo version. And the music and sound effects were better as well. In this edition of the game, you also have multiple weapons you can take the enemies out with. But they too require ammunition, which sucks. Robocop once again dons a jetpack and is thrust into an overhead shooter level, which seems out of place. The shooting mechanics of this stage are wonky. I found myself getting direct hits on the targets only to not have them blow up. It was only until I hit them at an angle that the hit registered and the dang thing blew up. Bad programming. Similar to the NES version of Robocop 3, the SNES version suffered from suckery. Again with the weapon thing and boring enemies, colors and gameplay. Take a look. The Sega Genesis version of Robocop 3 was in my opinion the best. The music was top notch and the graphics were better than the SNES version. No hate in the comments please, I love both the Genesis and the SNES. The only other thing about the game was that I actually beat it while I was recording footage for this game. It's short and you can beat it in an afternoon, which is great in my opinion. That's not to say that it's not challenging because it still is. The mediocrity of Ocean's Robocop 2 and 3 for various systems did not deter Virgin from grabbing the license and releasing Robocop vs Terminator. Robocop vs Terminator is a crossover game that is every nerd's dream. Both games were good, so there's that. First I'll talk about the SNES version. In the SNES version, John Connor's armies are sent back in time to try and foil Skynet's attempts to steal technology used to make Robocop. I guess they thought Robocop was strong or something, I don't know. It's your job to stop the Terminators from taking over the world with your technology. The graphics of this game are dark and apocalyptic. The Robocop character model feels mechanical and just right. Robo's weapons are not bothered by ammunition as each weapon you obtain to kill off the Terminators has unlimited ammo, and that rocks. You get to fight a wide variety of enemies including a Robo Dog. Poor Robo Puppy. And the old classic Terminators, both skinned and unskinned versions, are also running loose in this game. Much like its predecessors, this game is very challenging and you will die a lot playing it. The sounds of the game make the most out of the Super Nintendo sound chip, which is passable. Right off the bat, the big difference between the Genesis and the SNES versions of this game are the blood. Every time you kill a human character, you get a gush of blood. In the Super Nintendo game, the blood is missing. It's the same old Nintendo policy about leaving blood out of games much like it did with Mortal Kombat. The Genesis didn't do that, I'm just saying. Personally, I'm a blood guy. The other notable difference is the character models used in the sound. The character models are more on point and feel less beefy. The sound benefits from the Genesis sound chip as all of the music and background noises add to the overall production of the game. Much like the SNES version, the graphics are dark and moody and fitting for the type. Not to be outdone by the SNES or its predecessors, the game is extremely difficult. Since we are talking about Robocop gaming history here, I'm just gonna leave the Game Boy version of Robocop vs Terminator here and let you sink in the suckery.
Titus took over the license of the Robo franchise and delivered its first version of the game on the Game Boy Advance. This time, Robocop got the overhead treatment. Titus could have done a lot better with this confusing mess of programming. The character doesn't even look anything remotely like Robocop. Throughout the game, there are civilians running around in circles, and I found myself shooting them while trying to get the bad guys. The game is confusing, and there really isn't much to say about it, except you should avoid it. Titus's next title in the Robocop franchise was a first-person shooter for the Xbox and PS2. I am reviewing the Xbox version here. This game gets a lot of hate, but I did have some fun with it. It seems fitting for Robocop to get the first-person shooter treatment. Robo's targeting mechanism seems to be a great fit for the first-person shooter genre. The game is nothing special as you play Robocop and are thrust into the gangland of Detroit to kill baddies. You know, basic Robocop stuff. Rather than stomping out Nuke, Robo is after a drug they call Brain Drain. Such an original name. I can see why some people hate this game. There are no checkpoints. You can be deep in a level and if you die, you are starting over from the very beginning, my friend. The other thing is that the sound doesn't seem to be mixed very well. The voices in some of the cutscenes are extremely faint, and you have to turn up your TV really high to hear what they are saying. Grant you, you could just read it, but I want to hear it, darn it. The graphics are representative of the times, although this game is no Halo. It's like Halo's drunk uncle who is always trying to bum a $5 bill to buy some liquor. The remake of Robocop in 2014 did not bring any new games to the consoles. However, the game did get released on iPhone and Android platforms as a mobile game. Here is a trailer that shows some gameplay footage that the publishers released. It was basically a free-to-play shooter that is no longer available to download. This is modern gaming for you guys. What did you expect? And that's going to do it for the Big Retro Show today, guys. Let me know in the comments which Robocop game you like playing. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you're alert when I upload a new video. And until the next one, I will see you on the next Big Retro Show.